Hello everyone, Captain Horn here. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 video. I hope you enjoy watching and maybe even learn a thing or two from this video. Before we begin, if you would like to see more Microsoft Flight Simulator content, please consider subscribing to my channel. It takes less than 5 seconds and it would greatly help my channel out. If you are interested in supporting myself and my channel, be sure to check out the different tiers in my Patreon for different rewards. If you are interested in becoming an active member in my community, or would like to find others to fly with in Microsoft Flight Simulator, feel free to join my Discord server. The link to both my Patreon and Discord is in the description. Let's get right into this video. What's going on everybody? Captain Orange 23 here, and by now you've probably read the video title, and um, it, we are going to be installing VATSIM and setting up VATSIM and all that good stuff in this video. I've seen a lot of requests for this and I've decided to do this myself. I've been a VATSIM user for quite some time now and with the brand new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, uh, VATSIM will be very awesome. But first, you may ask, what is VATSIM? Well, VATSIM is a totally free program that is free to anybody to use. It's very easy to get started. All you need to do is make an account and connect it to your simulator and you will be able to talk to air traffic control. That's right, other people, like other people will be air traffic control. Now I am actually a controller at Charlotte, but um, I haven't gotten on in like two months, so that's that. Anyway, you will literally be able to talk to other humans on this planet that are controlling certain airspace at different airports and you need to respond you gotta use the terminology you gotta use everything and be professional it's very awesome and it brings the realism to a whole new level so let's get in right into how to install and um, configure VATSIM alright setting up VATSIM and connecting it to the simulator is actually really simple to do and we're going to do that right now so the first thing you want to do is navigate to this getting started page on VATSIM. The link will be in the description and you just got to follow these steps here. The first step says to join VATSIM and you need to click on this link. And once you're on this page, you go to the sign up page right here and fill all this out and you will be good to go and you will have a VATSIM account. All right, after that, we need something called vPilot. Now this connects your simulator to the VATSIM world and allows you to talk to air traffic control and other pilots. The link to this will also be in the description. Go ahead and download the stable and drag it out to your desktop like I have here. After it's out on your desktop, you can go ahead and run the setup and it's most likely going to say Windows protected your PC. Do not worry about this. It is not a virus and you can take my word for it. Just hit the more information and run anyway. And then of course we want to agree and install it wherever you like and launch it. All right, and when you first launch it, it's going to come up with this dialog. It says, it's the first time you've run vPilot on this computer. Some configuration items are required before you can connect. Would you like to configure it now? And click yes. All right, and this little window is going to pop up. And we need to fill in some things here. So network, your VATSIM CID is going to be whatever your of course your ID is for VATSIM. When you whenever you did the sign up page, you should have gotten an email with your ID. Mine is this right here and the password you will need to fill that in obviously you guys are not going to know what my password is <laughs> alright and your full name just goes in this box obviously as it shows and your home airport I will obviously use KCLT because that is pretty much my home airport in real life um, but of course you want to pick whichever airport you are closest to or it really doesn't matter I mean I could pick Los Angeles even though I'm on the East Coast and it wouldn't matter just whatever your favorite airport is or it's purely up to preference okay VATSIM server obviously you want to pick the one that's closest to you so like I just said I am the USA East so I will use that and after that we can move on to notifications you can mess with these if you wish but I'm not going to same way with fonts you can change the different fonts alright now audio this is really important so it appears that it is picking up my microphone but you need to select the microphone device and for me it's going to be this the voice mod virtual audio and the output device is pretty self-explanatory either your speakers or your headset which is what I'm going to use my headset and now this disable realistic ATC audio effects I would not recommend doing um, well it's mainly a preference thing because if you check this it's gonna sound like I'm talking to you right now whereas with this on uh, unchecked like it is it's gonna sound like they're actually talking through a radio so it sounds really good now of course you can adjust the output volume here and your mic volume alright and you will need to set a push to talk key this is imperative with VATSIM uh, I use I usually use the decimal on my keyboard on the numpad 
keyboard key decimal. Uh, but again, it's purely preference. You select whatever push to talk key that you want. Model matching, FSX, we don't need to worry about that because we are on MSFS, which is the next one right here. All right, and we don't really have to mess with anything here because 34 models found and 34 identified, so we are good there. Performance, you can adjust how far away you can display aircraft. Obviously, if you're in a lower end PC, you might struggle a little bit, so I would lower this number. But if you are on a high end PC, I'm going to make mine 500 nautical miles. Maximum aircraft to display, I wouldn't touch that at all. Just leave it at 999. Updates, check. You might as well just leave that checked. And miscellaneous. Uh, automatically squawk mode C on takeoff. This again takes away the realism, but if you do not, if you're not squawking mode C, which is, um, l you know, allowing the tower to get radar contact on you, then they will get mad, not get mad, but they will tell you to squawk mode C, and it's a good learning experience, but if you want to automatically uh, squawk mode C, then feel free to check that, but I am going to leave it unchecked. And after you're done with all your settings, go ahead and hit apply and OK. Another tool that I highly recommend getting for VATSIM is something called VATSPY. What this does is it allows you to see all air traffic in the air currently and all air traffic control that is currently on. It's a free program, the link will be in the description, and it looks something like this. As we see here is the United States, and we can see all air traffic, and we see Atlanta approaches on, we have Fort Worth Center, and if we go over to Europe, it is very busy now probably because it's the evening over there but yes VATSPY you can see if a air traffic control is on at your departure airport and arrival airport alright let's head into the game and since Atlanta approach is on I am going to spawn in at Atlanta Hartsville International and here's a very important tip guys do not spawn in on a runway when you are connecting to VATSIM this is only going to make everybody mad and air traffic control will most likely boot you off you always want to spawn at a gate this is very important I cannot stress that enough alright and I'm going to select the Airbus A320 Neo and we're gonna hit fly alright guys so here we are at a gate not on a runway I will say that again and of course my luck I'm actually at KOKC which is um, Will Rogers Airport or something like that but I had to change because of course right when I got in Atlanta approach got offline which is one of the negatives about VAT sim it um, the air traffic controllers are not 24 7 unlike real life now um, another quick tip is to use live weather because we see here it is cloudy and if you do not have live weather on and I have clear skies instead and I listen to the ATIS on VAT sim then it is going to be totally wrong Live weather also increases the realism factor of using VATSIM. Alright, but anyway, we are at a gate, and we have live weather on. So what we can do now is open vPilot, and all we have to do here is go up to this connect right here in the top left, click it, and we are going to go over some things here. So yours is going to look like this right here. Now, your call sign needs to be something that you will remember and kind of think of it like your name something that when you hear it you know you will be attentive to it because air traffic control is going to be calling your call sign quite frequently and it just needs to be something that you will remember also you need to use the ICAO code for your airline whichever airline you're gonna be flying for for instance I usually always fly Delta which is DAL American Airlines is AAL Southwest is SWA etc etc it's a three digit um, letters rather not digits that is your airline so you need to know what that is just look it up if you're not sure but I always fly for Delta so DAL and it needs to be a number it can be uh, minimum two numbers but I like to use 623 just like that I used to be 5454 like that but I am going to be using 623 alright once you have your call sign you need your type code now this is the current aircraft that you are flying so it's really simple all you have to do is we are in an Airbus A320 so just start typing Airbus and then A320 and it pops up right here there's three options I'm just gonna select this bottom one sale call code do not worry about it and leave it blank and then we can hit connect and there we go we are connected to the voice server now our COM1 is going to depend on what our COM1 is currently set in our aircraft <clears throat> and it should be this aqua color 
But the reason it's not is because, well, the Airbus is currently off. So if I give this power just like that, and our radio is on down here, and go back to the pilot, now COM1 is highlighted in an aqua color. And you want to test out your push to talk and make sure it's good by pressing whichever key it is and make sure that TX right beside it lights up just like that. All right. With that being said, over here on the left, we have controllers in range. We see we have Fort Worth Center and OKC Approach. And we also have an ATIS right here. Now, this is, it works in a top down fashion. So, for instance, if there was a clearance delivery on, we would call him up first. If there was no clearance delivery, but there was a ground, we would call him. If there was no ground or clearance delivery, but there was a tower, we would call him. And in this case, there is an approach departure on, so they are going to take care of all of tower, ground, and clearance delivery procedures. Same way with center. If, a, if an approach was not on, this center would be taking over literally everything. So it can kind of get stressful on them. Keep that in mind. All right, the first thing we want to do, though, is connect to this ATIS, I, or ATIS down here and just listen to this this is the automated traffic information system and it's a good way to test if you are receiving a voice so we need to enter 125 decimal 85 in our radio so i've got 125 and there's 85 and now listen whenever i switch it over to the active 360 at 11 visibility 10 1900 cataract ceiling 20000 broken temperature 18 so obviously we are able to listen to the ATIS and we are receiving very good. And now you can see what I mean. It said visibility low or something like that and clouds. If we were on clear weather instead of live weather, that would have not made any sense. All right, and the last thing that you want to do to make sure you are good to go is get a radio check. And for that, we are actually going to talk to another person. So I'm going to connect to Oklahoma Approach 124.2. I'm going to type that into my standby. 124.2. And it's really easy to ask for a radio check. All you have to do is say your call sign and then say radio check. And he is either going to tell me, he will most likely tell me, I can hear you 5x5. Five five. And all that means is I can hear you perfectly. Now, 3x5 would be like you're, I can understand you, but... It's a little choppy, and 1x5 would be like you need to get something fixed. So I'm going to go over here and simply say Delta 623 uh, radio check. Well, first I'm going to say, uh, yeah, I'll just say Delta 623 radio check, and you can hear what they say. So here we are on the frequency. Of course, it's not going through because I'm not pushing to talk. But if I say this, Delta 623 radio check. He Delta said, 623 approach loud and clear, honey. There we go. Okay, he said loud and clear. Now, some of them will say 5x5, five five, or just simply, I can hear you loud and clear, just like that. So, that is how you get started with that sim. Um, I will release more tutorials on how to call for, uh, you know, get clearance and all that good stuff and talking to center controllers and approach controllers, all that good stuff in later videos. But for now, this is enough to get you started on VATSIM, so get in and start talking to some real people that are on the tower. So that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Um, keep a lookout for more MSFS 2020 live streams and video tutorials. There will definitely be more on VATSIM. If you're new to the channel, please do like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day or night depending on when you're watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one.